So Mercury goes retrograde three times a year, right? Something that happens quite frequently, sometimes even four times a year. Um, and Mercury retrogrades are known for things, you know, kind of being a little bit chaotic, out of control, or, you know, you have to go over something, you have to do something over again. There's a miscommunication. There's some type of, you know, technological error. Uh, so Mercury retrogrades are known to be pretty annoying for the most part. Uh, however, this particular Mercury retrograde that we're going to be having uh, from what? Pretty much uh, May 29th until, oh, somewhere around June 22nd. Um, Mercury goes retrograde for about three weeks. This one is going to be particularly more chaotic, a little bit more extreme, not necessarily in a bad way. Extreme can be fun, uh, but this is going to be a little bit more louder, a little bit more intense than usual. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. One thing to, uh, one thing I just want to address, if you're watching this video, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you know what a Mercury retrograde is and because it's so common, it's such a buzzword now, most people know what it is, uh, that it's a planet appearing to move backwards. Mercury does this all of the time because Mercury loves to play games. Mercury is the trickster of the uh, of the planets. Um, so we're not going to go into what exactly the phenomenon of a Mercury retrograde is. Let's just assume you already know that. And if not, there's plenty of information online. Uh, but let's talk about why this Mercury retrograde is going to be a little bit crazier than normal. Um, let's talk about Mercury. What is Mercury? What does Mercury do? What does Mercury represent? Mercury is going to represent communication for number one. Mer Mercury is going to represent our ideas, our thoughts, the way that we, uh, the way that we communicate, um, what we communicate, how we communicate. Uh, Mercury, if I am correct here, translates to logos in Greek and uh, pretty much represents images, pretty much represents uh, some symbolism almost in a sense. Things like astrology is ruled by Mercury um, in the more traditional sense, of course. Uh, Mercury rules things like logistics. Mercury rules things like communication and technology in some sense. Mercury has everything to do with our ideas, again, our thoughts, and so when you have a planet that represents all those things, right, you want that planet to work well. Well, or at least you want that planet to move forward, right? Think of a message. You don't, when you send something in the mail, you want that piece of mail to get to the destination you want it to get to, right? That doesn't necessarily happen when Mercury retrogrades. Now, in traditional astrology, retrogrades are always known to be somewhat bad. But of course, in traditional astrology thousands of years ago, you could die by drinking the wrong water. So a lot of things were bad. However, we can look at this in this newer age of saying Mercury retrogrades are going to be a little bit more frustrating. Sure, you might have some problems, but it's nothing that you can't get over. But when Mercury, the planet of ideas, thoughts, communication, is moving backwards, can you maybe put together what that might represent? Maybe a miscommunication. Mercury retrogrades are always known for miscommunications. Mercury retrogrades are known for technology breaking. Mercury retrogrades are known for rethinking, reviewing, going over things again. Now, of course, Mercury retrogrades happen three to four times a year. There's periods of each year where we, gotta, we have to go over things again, right? Maybe we kind of assume something. Maybe our head was focused on an idea and we thought about it and then maybe we learned something new and had to go over it and rethink it again, right? Well, that is just what a Mercury retrograde period represents. We're going to be thinking about something. Our head's going to be focused on in one area. And because Mercury is going to retrograde, go over part of that sky again, we're going to be coming back to it, but this time in a different position, in this time with a different perspective, this time looking at something differently. And then, of course, once Mercury moves forward and starts to station direct, move forward again, then we can cover it one more time. You know, we do the test, Mercury goes retrograde, we get the results back, we learned what we got wrong, Mercury stations direct, we do the test again, and we pass. So like I said, this happens quite frequently, but what makes this Mercury retrograde different? One, it's happening in Gemini. This is Mercury's home sign. This is like with you lost your car keys in your own home. Now, if you lost your car keys in someone else's house, it's not like you're, they're going to be in their bedroom or you know in some random place. There's only so many places it can be, but when you lose your keys in your own home, man, it really could be anywhere. 
And Mercury rules the sign of Gemini, right? Let's talk about what the sign of Gemini represents. It's an air sign, so it has to do with the intellectual, it has to do with mercurial ruled things. By the way, we also have Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius in air signs, so the theme is much more air in the elemental scheme. Gemini is represented by the twins. So the way I like to say, you know, what is the twins, what does that mean? Um, for example, Libra, which is another air sign, is very this or that, right? We're judging going back or forth. Gemini is this and that. It is twins. It's not just, oh, this is, it's either me or my twin. It's like, you get twins as a pair. You get them together like shoes. Gemini is also going to naturally rule communication. Because Mercury rules Gemini and Mercury also rules Virgo, what I like to, how I like to really um, differentiate them is Gemini is an air, right? So it's much more vocal, has much more to do with how we're expressing and communicating vocally versus uh, Virgo, which is also Mercury's home sign. Uh, is a earth sign, so it has to do much more with the physical, so I think much more of written word, of uh, text, right? So as Mercury transits Gemini, as it does every single year, this is usually a time where Mercury, you know, you can express yourself uh, well, you're learning new ideas, you know, things are making sense to you, and you're able to express them, and, you're, and you find the right words for the right, you know, for the, for the right, but as Mercury, is just as Mercury is really good in Gemini when it's moving forward, when Mercury retrogrades in Gemini, it's a little bit more problematic. Also, what makes this Mercury retrograde crazy is the fact that this is happening during eclipse season. Now, as you guys know, the eclipses are in Gemini and Sagittarius, which is playing a whole big role in all of the logistical problems and the travel issues that the world is seeing right now. As the eclipses happen in Gemini, this is just activating that whole sign in general, activating Mercury in general, Mercury's qualities and Mercury's significations in general, right? So this is all to say that this Mercury retrograde is going to be pretty intense. Eclipses also signify um, changes in time, right? When the hands of fate really kind of change your course almost in a sense. So all I'm trying to stack up here are just reasons why this Mercury retrograde is a little bit more important than usual. So let's actually go over what days Mercury is going to be doing things and what that means and what's going to happen. So Mercury actually enters shadow beginning on May 14th. Mercury is going to enter shadow around 6 p.m. And uh, it's going to enter shadow at about 16 degrees of Gemini. Now, as Mercury enters shadow, this is where the context really starts to begin and really starts to develop of what this Mercury retrograde is going to bring up. Now, if you haven't already, check out my May horoscopes that I did. I talk all about how the Mercury retrograde is going to affect you in your chart. Um, so if you want to know how this Mercury retrograde is going to affect you, please go ahead and watch those. Anyway... Uh, this is where the context really starts to develop, and it's going to be really important to see what sign or what house Gemini rules in your chart, right? Whether it's your 7th house of relationships or 10th house of career or, you know, whatever. As Mercury rules that house, so for example, this is the moment that Mercury, well, this is around the time that Mercury uh enter shadow. Now, let's say this is a birth chart and this person is a Scorpio rising uh, and Mercury rules the eighth house of shared resources and death. This is where something of, uh, of significance would happen, where, uh, where it would occur, where the themes would start to develop. So that might be like, you know, um, and this isn't for Scorpio risings. This is the eighth house. So this is an extreme example. So take this lightly, but this would be like getting news of someone getting sick or, uh, th or you know, all of a sudden a bill, a bigger bill comes up and it's due in like two weeks that, you know, you weren't really expecting expecting or you know you get some car issues it's a, something along the lines comes up at this moment um and what's really interesting here too is the fact that mercury you know is already past the north node this is really intensifying a lot of mercurial things uh the moon is also here too so there's just a lot of focus on the gemini area now this is mercury entering shadow this is when the context starts to begin this is when you really want to start paying attention this is when your mind is going to be really focused on an area and you're going to eventually come right back to where you were we're going to come right back to that put a pin in may 14th because we're coming back to it next thing on may 22nd let me switch it here click 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 uh may 22nd uh we're gonna have mercury squaring neptune now this really perfects around 8 p.m but this is really important um, Mercury is going to square Neptune about 22 degrees, 53 minutes on May 22nd. And, uh, what's really important about this is Neptune rules, uh, illusion, confusion, mysticism, media, distortion, um, all, all those types of things, right? 
And as Mercury, the, the messenger, squares, makes a harsh aspect to the planet of confusion, expect, this is where I talk about in the monthly horoscopes, this is going to be a, either a miscommunication or a misinterpretation. And what sucks about this is this is Mercury and Gemini, right? So let's say you are the messenger here. You're communicating the message just fine. But Neptune squaring it means it is not going to be interpreted that way. It is not about what you say or how you say it, but it's how others or it's how it's projected or how it's um, translated is a good way to look at it. So once we get to May 22nd, this is where you're really going to start to see the miscommunication come up, the blurred lines come up, where you say something and someone's just kind of nodding their head like, yeah. And you're like, I don't think you get what I'm saying. And they're like, I get what you're saying. And you're like, I don't know. That's when this comes up. So this is going to be really important to go like, hey, what are you paying attention to? Are you seeing things clearly or are you just like the other thing is with Mercury and Gemini, Mercury's in its home sign, right? You're comfortable in your home. Oh, I know where I put my keys. I'll, I, I know exactly where I put my keys, you know, even though you just toss them when you walk in. Uh, don't get too cocky and comfortable just because you're in your home sign. Are you reviewing and looking over everything or are you being confused? Are you misinterpreting the facts that you think you're clear about? This is going to be the really important thing about May 22nd where, you know, and it's not your fault or the other of what side you're on with this, but it's just going to be like, you know, pay attention, wake up. Um, now, where it gets crazy, and this is where this whole Mercury retrograde really changes themes, is when we get to May 25th? Yes. This is when we have the total lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. This has not as much to do with Mercury in the sense, because Mercury is not really being aspected. However, this is a Mercury sign, and this is when eclipse season begins, right? I talk about in the monthly horoscopes that this is going to be an exhaustion. This is going to be a drain. I talk about, I've talked about for this past year or two, if you've been watching my horoscopes, the North Node in Gemini is we're learning new information. New things are coming in. Whether it's rumor, whether it's fact, it's true, it doesn't matter. New information is coming in. And the South Node, right? Our past, what the South Node is, what's what we got to release. The South Node is like, you know, the, you got to cut this out. It's time to let it go, is in Sagittarius. Where Sagittarius is about vision, belief, dream. Look at where Sagittarius is at in your chart. How much of that has really changed in your life in the past year? How much have you really let go in that area of your life? How much have you really, you know, really changed a lot of your visions and your ideals around that? Uh, what have you had to release? Because that's what this total lunar eclipse brings up. As we're getting all this new information, we gotta, uh, it's going to change some of our beliefs. It's going to change some of the way that we view things. It's going to change our target, where we're aiming for, our literal ideals of where we want to go and expand into. And as the North Node's in Gemini, as this eclipse happens, this is really where that new information takes a lot of form. And Mercury's in Gemini here. So, like, we're, again, we're really taking in a lot of new information, whether we understand it correctly or not. That's going to be up for this Mercury retrograde to decide, however... This is when it hits. Um, the eclipse really does kick off something, but what we need to get to is we need to get to May 28th. As you notice, this is when Venus conjoins Mercury. Now, this actually happens a little bit earlier in the day, around 3.30 p.m. on May 28th. Or my bad. No, 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 my bad. This is uh, this happens at about 10 p.m. later in the evening on May 28th at about 24 degrees. Now, Mercury is the faster planet. So that usually means Mercury is the planet that applies to Venus. Mercury is the one coming up to Venus, having something to say. Because Mercury is moving slow, Venus is moving, and Venus is moving faster, Venus is the one applying to Mercury here. So Venus has something for Mercury to say, which, mind you, Mercury stations retrograde tomorrow at this point, on May 29th. So Mercury is motionless. So the way I would look at this is Mercury is deer in the headlights. Mercury is motionless in Gemini. There is all of this new information and facts that became revealed. Now what? And Venus is going to come up to Mercury and say, what do you want? Because Venus is in Gemini at this point. I talk about this in the monthly horoscopes. We're wanting to stimulate. Like we're wanting to connect. Think about, this is what's so funny. Think about lockdown and after everyone was done baking their breads and nature was done healing, um, everyone was figuring out Zoom. 
everyone, I, I remember downloading House Party, and I remember all of the, just the Zooms and the group chats I was in, just like, all while Venus was in Gemini, trining Saturn in Aquarius, right? That was like earlier, I think April, May of uh, 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2020. This is a very similar time, but Venus in Gemini here, Venus is wanting to connect, wanting to stimulate, right? Uh, Venus is enjoying conversation. Venus is enjoying debate. Venus is having fun, right? And Venus is conjoining Mercury, saying, hey, you know, we can have a little fun here. And then what do you want? What, what actually, what, are, what, what, what is stimulating you? Now, I also talk about the fact that Venus and Mercury are going to be squaring Neptune. What's overstimulating? What's, what's too much? Hey, you know, for example, like a lot of people like EDM, but some people don't like the extreme stuff. They really like the light calm stuff, even if it is bassy and it is, you know, still a little bit more intense. As Venus conjoins Mercury, as Mercury is pretty much deer in the headlights, taking in this new information, I think Venus conjoining Mercury is, is, is also too, when you talk about the interior planets, you're talking about like the, the intellect. Um, Ficino talks about that. Um, you have this kind of idea of, of um, with, with Venus and Gemini too, you have this uh, social intellectualism in the sense of like knowing how to connect with people and charm with people, right? That's what Venus and Gemini is all about. Learning how to do that, connecting um, through communication, connecting through ideas, connecting through learning, through chatter, right? Uh, and as Venus conjoins Mercury, I think there's, there's, it's last, think back to last year when Venus, Venus just stationed retrograde here last year, last spring, May, around May 13th. Think of May and June. What changed for you? What did you, what, what, what did your taste change? Like you really enjoyed something, right? That's what Venus represents, enjoying something. And something about what you enjoyed changed. You stopped enjoying something and you started enjoying something else. And that's really where it started. This is where, sure, you you might have enjoyed something. You started a new sensation. This is where it starts to make sense. And this is where you go, oh, I think I know what needs to change. I think I, this is where the information hits, right? Because the next day, as Venus conjoins Mercury, this is getting that taste, right? For, for example, this is actually kind of a similar example. Um, I used to hate avocado and I love avocado now. That's kind of a similar thing. Venus conjoining Mercury is like, hey, you might have not liked this at first, but you might like it. Your taste might change a little bit. Or maybe you used to like it, and now you don't like it because we're learning more. We're growing. This is eclipse season. Now let's talk about the next day. Mercury stations retrograde. So it's like this realization of a ch change in our taste, a change in our flavor, this changes us. We go, huh. Well, what was all that about the past few weeks? Well, what was I doing all that for the past few weeks? Think of what Gemini rules in your chart. This is completely changing what for like, you know, if Gemini rules your 11th house, a whole group dynamic is changing with you and friendships. If you have Gemini ruling your sixth house, your work, your routine, your health habits, that's changing. And it's because you're learning something new, right? It's because there's a change in what stimulates you. There's a change in what you enjoy. And this is where, as Mercury stations retrograde, we go, okay, now I see what, it holy shit. Oh my God, my dishes fucking just fell right there. That just scared the shit out of me. Whew, okay. As Mercury stations retrograde, this is what we're starting to reflect on. This is what we're starting to review on. This is where we go, okay, what do I have to see differently? What do I have to understand? This is when we get the results back and we go, oh, this is what needs to change. This is what we need to go over. Um, so that all starts on May 29th. And then we get to about a week later. And this is where it gets interesting because, again, Mercury doesn't move all too much till we get to June 5th. June 5th is one of the main highlights of this Mercury retrograde. Mercury is going to square Neptune again earlier in the day. But now that Mercury's retrograde squaring Neptune, this was this is where we go, oh, I see where I misinterpreted that. <laughs> oh, was that me? I didn't know I saw that wrong. This could be that way, or this also could be with Mercury squaring Neptune. This could see, this is just also seeing where the confusion lies. That doesn't mean that the solution's necessarily gonna present itself all that easy, uh, or the solution is gonna be easy. Um but this is where you see where the confusion got twisted up. This is where you see the confusion get all mixed up. Um, so this looks a little bit frustrating as we get to June 5th. Um, and then 
This is where this Mercury, by the way, this is where Mercury retrograde gets pretty wild at this point. Um, whoops, I keep pushing the wrong button. This Mercury retrograde gets pretty wild at this point. Uh, because again, we're in the middle of eclipse season. Eclipse season is heightening everything, right? It's heightening the energy. It's that the one of the most intense times of the of the year. Um, we get to June 10th and we get to this Mercury Kazemi slash solar eclipse. Let's jump to that. Check this out. What is this? What is this? This is way, this is insane. This is insanity. Mercury is literally going to be Kazemi in the heart of the sun, which this is this middle point of the Mercury retrograde. This is where Mercury retrograde, for example, like we just talked about, Mercury squaring Neptune is going, oh, I see where the misinterpretation happened. Mercury going, or going Kazemi, <laughs> conjoining the sun, this is going, oh, now I see the solution. But this is, isn't just any ordinary solution. This solution involves an eclipse. Mercury is literally being smacked with an eclipse. This is literally getting smacked with the truth, to be honest. Like, this is going, oh, maybe, <laughs> like, mind you, Saturn is also now retrograde at this point. I'm not going to explain that just to put a little bit of <laughs> something in there. But with with the eclipse happening, you got to ask yourself, hey, you know, with it happening, with this, it's literally a total solar eclipse. No, it's not actually a total solar eclipse. I take that back. It's an annular solar solar eclipse. Um, but it's smacking Mercury all the same. It's ruler. This is fundamentally changing things. This is when you see... You, you see there's, there's a difference when you're able to address a symptom versus when you're able to address like the root issue, right? This is where we kind of start to see that addressal of more of a root because this is literally being smacked with the truth. This is literally being smacked. And again, look at where Gemini rules in your chart. What is being realized, like especially for the Gemini risings? You're probably going to go, oh, this is who I am. This is what I need to say. You know, like there's there's a revelation here and it's dramatic. It's intense. And eclipses aren't always good either, right? Eclipses are actually known to be very bad omens. Now, that's not to say that this can definitely be some, like extreme energy can be very overstimulating and be negative for sure. But I look at this as like, hey, dude, the truth's the truth. You know, the message is the message. That's the thing with Mercury. You can't shoot the messenger. You just got to take what you got to take. And that's that's what this I think this is, and this really changes the game. I, I like I've said, I, I've analogized this Mercury retrograde like that scene from Mean Girls, where everyone's just going chaotic because the burn book got out, and everyone's this is that moment where it's like okay, the truth got everyone knows about the burn book, and it's going down. It's going down at this point. And this is really where I've been trying to say, this is where 2021 changes. You know, we had a crazy beginning of the year and then things kind of settled down a little bit. This is where, just like also think back last year, think of last spring, you know, it went from COVID to all of a sudden protests and it just completely changed over and overnight almost. Very similar thing at this point. Now we get to uh, when Mercury stations direct. Now notice... Nothing really happens between Mercury going, having this eclipse on its Kazemi, and then as we move forward a couple days to June 22nd, nothing really happens with Mercury until Mercury station is direct. So it's like Mercury gets smacked with this truth, and then it's kind of like, it's kind of like when someone like gets like super canceled online, and then like you don't hear anything from them for like a couple weeks till like things blow over, and then they start doing things again. This is kind of like the same thing. Um, which by the way, by the way, if you want to talk about people getting canceled, you want to talk about, uh, also the horrible, like, let me just say, if you're watching this and you're in charge of advertising for a big company, just like, uh, like, let's say you're the advertiser for Pepsi and you could, you could have given the red light for the Kylie or Kendall Jenner, whoever the fuck it was for the Pepsi commercial. Like, this is one of those moments that Mercury Kazemi is like, you know, maybe you shouldn't have posted that. Like, I think you're going to see a lot of really bad advertisements. You're going to see a lot of bad, pe like, so many bad advertisements. It's going to be really nasty. Um, but Mercury Station's direct. 
When did Mercury enter shadow, you might ask? May 14th, over a month before this, and we're right back where we started. So what's important about Mercury retrogrades, and this is where, mind you, Mercury's the trickster. And this is when Mercury stations direct, this is the moment where you go, you know what? Fuck Mercury. Fuck, why the fuck did I do all that? Why did, why was that even a thing? I, the thing is with Mercury, it plays games, right? And you learn through that way. You learn through, you know, weird trickster type stuff. But as Mercury stations direct, this is where you go, okay, now I know where to move forward. I've gotten the information. I've gotten the truth. Now I know what I need to clear up. Now the information is clear. I'm going to try not to confuse it because, again, here in July, which, again, now we're talking really far out there, on July 6th, which is the next, this is the next thing after Mercury stations direct, on July 6th, let me get to it, Mercury will square Neptune again. You're going, it's not going to be easy, you know, Let's say this is a calculus test. You think you got it right because you got you, you thought you understand it. Mercury stations retrograde. You get your test back. C- turns out you don't know shit about calculus. Uh, you ch- go, okay, maybe I do need to really relearn calculus. And then Mercury goes Kazemi. You go, oh my god, I totally had that wrong. You're going to redo it again. Mercury's going to square Neptune where it's going to be easy to fall back into old habits. It's going to be easy to get confused again. But this is your third go around, right? Like you can still fuck up at this point. But try really hard to just pay attention. We do have a little bit of free will in this life. Um, Pay attention. Don't don't mess it up. This is your opportunity to not mess things up on July sixth. Don't get it twisted. It's gonna get really. It's gonna be really easy to get things confused and twisted uh, with Mercury squaring Neptune. And then also, mind you, on July sixth, literally later that day, uh, Mercury also leaves shadow. As the moon conjoins Mercury. And now Mercury's done. We're done with the Mercury retrograde. We're completely over it. It's finished by July 7th. We're done. So that's a long time, right? Half of May, all of June, a little bit of July. And it's not till July till we get it all figured out. But why I'm kind of emphasizing this Mercury retrograde is, I mean, it's on top of eclipses. There's literally an eclipse on top of Mercury. This is going to be... Like if you've been kind of like, hmm, I wonder what's going on here in whatever Gemini rules in your chart, it's going to come up and you're going to get really clear about what's happening with it. So a good thing to really do during all of this time is to just, you know, it's if it's kind of like if you're going to go watch a movie about war, don't like if and if you're expecting anything but seeing like like violence and depicted in the film, like you're smoking crack. If if you're going if you're walking into this Mercury retrograde, thinking that it's just gonna oh it won't really affect me Mercury's not my time lord oh I don't have anything in Gemini oh you know I don't I'm into sidereal or whatever like uh this is going to be a uh this Mercury retrograde is gonna be very like oh well okay then uh so. That's kind of my last final words with it. Like I said before, watch my May horoscopes. If you want to know more, if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for watching, being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Uh, And with that being said, I'll be seeing you next time.